This is not just another golf podcast. This is Golf Underground. This is Golf Golf Underground. Underground. We just happen to be the third funniest podcast in golf. We interview PGA Tour pros, Hall of Fame athletes, rock stars, business leaders. Sure, we talk about golf, but we have fun. All right, let's do it. Welcome Welcome to to Golf Golf Underground. Underground. Now your hosts, Wardo, Sully, and and MLB MLB Hall of Famer, George Brett. Brett. Thanks for joining the Golf Underground. Now, the Golf Underground is brought to you by Star Companies, KC. Experience a more energy-efficient and comfortable home with Star's insulation services. Regain functional medicine. Feel better, function better, move better, and look better. Regal Distributing. Specializing in the distribution of food service and professional cleaning supplies to a variety of industries. Cowell Insurance. Providing brokerage and risk management services for over 25 years. Sano Orthopedics, care plans backed by research and clinical results tailored perfectly to individual needs. Bobsite Ford and Bobsite Independence Kia, where you'll score a double eagle on your next car or truck. Sheridan's Unforked, eating good and feeling good. Lewisburg Ford, nobody sells more F-150s than Lewisburg Ford. And Celebrity Greens, put a custom PGA caliber putting green in your backyard for the ultimate golf experience. Now, onto the program. All right, here we are. Welcome to Golf Underground ESPN Radio here in the stable. We got our new cozy surroundings here. I like, I like this better. Flower. I would be laying on the couch right now. Right. You'd be only laying on the couch. Right? I'd lay on the couch half the time we do this show, Lisa. Yeah. Kicks his feet up. Yeah. I mean, he was so disrespectful. Right. He was right. so disrespectful to Jim Rome, just had his feet up like another Sunday afternoon watching yeah. sports. And yeah, but look at us now. Like we're we can like we can hug on each other. <laughs> and, you know, and he doesn't like to be touched that much. <laughs> you see how he got all cringy there? He's, yeah. Yeah. And then, of course we got Wade over there. Wade's um he's um he's he's joining in with the crew today. So so let's um let's talk about Lisa Carney. We're having you on because you represent the powerful women of Johnson County, Kansas. And uh, I mean Right. You had to pay it forward or pay it back to your 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 town. So it's so good to have Lisa. Let me give you a formal introduction. You Um, you are uh, the host of FanDuel's More Ways to Win show. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're an award winning broadcast journalist. I think your story is really good. Of course, we do like to focus a bit on successful Kansas City people. And of course, Wordo out of the blue last week, he's like, I think I got a good get. Lisa Carney, you know, Lisa Carney, maybe like from Sports Center. No, I swear to God, I think we got her. So he, well, she's been so yeah. elusive for about a year and a half. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's I like mean, trying to track down the president. Lisa, where are you right now? You look no. like you're in California. I mean, I, I try to always channel California vibes. I work mostly in Los Angeles. First of all, thank you for having me. I am so excited to be with you guys. I'm planning to pick up a tip or two on just like the broadcasting scene. Cause usually I'm on the other side, you know, asking all the questions. Um, so thank you for having me. It really is an honor. And yes, Kevin, uh, it's been a long time coming. I've owed you, I've owed you many, many texts <laughs> and, uh, finally we are here. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, so did you and Kevin I, ever go out on a date or anything? <laughs> we, Kevin, we, do you remember when we went, you took me out golfing. Do you remember this? We uh, went to like high school we went out golfing. You golfed. I sat in the cart and I was excited to wear a cute outfit. And I, like uh, it. I mean, we went to grade school. We'd known each other for years. Wow. And uh, he was, you know, like this superior golfer. I'm like, I mean, I didn't grow up with golfers. I could learn a thing or two. He's pretty cute. Let's go. And Let's we go. Well, this well, is ego. So where did where did it go I from your golf. golfing date? Where did it go from there? <laughs> that was hey, it. Apparently, that that not was it. Thanks for <laughs> George. And I'm and I'm still a terrible golfer. Thanks a lot, Wardo. Well, I see every now and again you're out there playing. So at least you're maybe maybe getting a few rounds a year in. Yep. I try, I try. Oh, I must have way. been a horrible, must have been a bad coach. I guess I still am. I think it's patronizing <laughs> that you were the you know you made her sit in the cart. Well, you just showed off your athleticism. Sounds like I think that's patronizing, Lisa. I'm no not wonder sure why you moved I out of actually, Kansas City. I'm not sure entirely that I actually cared to swing a club at that that day. Now I'm all about it. I actually, I actually do play golf. I I had to like chill out and like 
cut myself off. I was playing like three rounds a week, plus clinics, plus like I was super into it. We had like a group of five of us women and we would rotate the four of us getting out. And, um, you know, when you stop drinking, it's a problem. So I stopped drinking. I was like, no more drinks at the turn. I can't figure this thing out. And then finally, I was like, I'm out. I can't do it. And the NFL started, the NFL season started. So I need to get back in, but, uh, yeah, it was too intense for a while. Speaking of NFL, we just had Sean Payton on the other day. Nice. He's a fan doer now. Yeah. 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 What do you think he's going to be coaching next year? Oh my gosh, you pick a team that needs a quarterback whisper and he's he's the guy. Right. Do you my think God. maybe and Denver then, might might be coming come knocking? If, I honestly I don't know. I don't have insights into it, but take your pick. I mean, Derek Carr just got benched. Denver can't figure it out. I mean, they Denver would be an incredible landing spot just because there are so many asses that need to save themselves over there. Um, but uh, the quarterback situation across the the league is um I mean, there are a number of spots that he could he could be useful. Yeah, he wouldn't want it. I mean, would you really want Russell Wilson? I mean, he, he was the bust of the year, right? Oh what would God. you do? With I that? mean, honestly, Nathaniel Hackett in his first year, he's he basically someone had to take the fall. Just like initially, just like throw someone out there. Like someone's got to go. He's obviously the guy that's got to go. The guy that he brought in to help him with clock management is now being propped up as like, okay, so you go co- coach the team. Somebody has to do it. All the while, n- none of these players even want to play with Russell Wilson because he just, he is, I mean, you guys all see what I see and what everyone else sees. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it is such a mess there. It's unbelievable. Is it is everything we're hearing true that even former Seahawks players have to go through his manager to, to get a phone call with him? Because he never to me seemed like that diva type, right? And his interviews, and of course you obviously had to interview him several times. Did you get that vibe that he was like that? You know what the funniest thing is to me is I covered him when he was married to his first wife. So he was like, you know, fresh out of the Midwest, like just salt of the earth, nice guy, happy to be here and work hard. And then he, and then it was like this whole full 180 and now we're glasses inside and all the gear and the stuff and like too cool for everyone. Even like one of my friends, he hosts one of the NFL podcasts. It's the league podcast. It's the league. Like you're coming through. It's kind of like a car wash style. Like we did at ESPN. And he just kept stiff. Like I, you know, I, I really can't today guys. I, you know, I'm really too busy. And I'm like, you're not, no one's going anywhere. Like you're not too busy. Like it just, <laughs> it's unreal. What, um, what he's become now. And, you know, he's doing five hours of high knees on the airplane going across. <laughs> oh my <Trans>. gosh. <laughs> hey, <That's> too bad. <laughs> sounds like she's not a Denver fan. Sounds like she's still a Chiefs hey. fan. Well, listen. Oh my gosh. Like and of all games to be playing this week, I don't know when you guys are putting out this podcast, but so excited um, for a Chiefs and Broncos this week. Oh yeah. So good. Yeah. Well, it, um, it seems like the fan duel, the, the new gig from a few years ago has yeah. given you like vocal freedom. You could yeah. just say whatever the hell you want right now, Lisa Carney. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. Like when I look back, I was at ESPN for five years, anchored sports center. I was anchoring NFL, uh, NFL live NFL insiders. I was hosting our fantasy show at the end of my tenure there. And when I decided to leave, I, I walked away from a contract on the table, which never happens at ESPN, but I have four small kids. My husband is, you know, carrying everything and the better, I mean, like in a lot of industries, but like the better you do, the worse your hours are, the more you work, you know, it's just like, it's, it's, it's the way it is there too. And, you know, I worked with amazing, awesome people, um, phenomenal athletes, former athletes that are analysts and, really great people. I loved my time there. Um, but it was just too much, you know, I'm working like 80 hours a week running on like three hours of sleep, trying to yeah. be like the mom that's like, you know, I get home, I was doing sports center at night. So I was doing a lot of the clothes shows. So it was like me and Bucci, me and Steve Levy and I, um, you know, um, the guys from the LA side, we all were together. I did a ton of shows with Kenny Maine and we had so much fun, but I would get mm-hmm. home at three, four in the morning. And that was like five sports centers a week. And then I would also do um, NFL on Sunday. So I was home one day a week. I get yeah. home in these crazy hours. 
And I was so like committed to taking my kids to school. So I was like that hot mess of a mom with like my hair in the messy bun with the big sunglasses on, like, Bye, the kids. like love you. Um, and then I like come back, take a nap and then get up, work out and go back to work. And like, that was my life. Just like this, wow. the cycle that was, um, it was pretty crazy for, for quite some time. And so finally, I was just like, you know what, there's going to be something else that's going to be great. And I love my time here. So why not leave on a high? And, um, that was the year of the Pathco repeal. So it was spring of 2018 that I left ESPN and FanDuel called right away. And we'll find Lisa, how old are your kids? How old are your kids now? Now they're 11, nine, seven, and seven. And boys or girls? Three girls and a boy. My twins are girl boy. And then uh, the older two are girls. That's awesome. Hey, awesome. when you were driving up to Bristol, did you live in Greenwich? Or did you get yourself a little chalet down on Cherry Street, Waterbury? No, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's myself and Hannah Storm that live in Greenwich. And we're the only, <laughs> we're the only two that are crazy enough to do the back and forth. There's 76 miles yep. one oh. way. Yep. What? Twice a day. Yeah. 76 no. miles. But yeah. And we actually did the drive today. I told you guys that we took our kids skiing, which yeah. is like right by Bristol. And yeah. um, I almost have like PTSD during that drive. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I did yeah. this every day for five years. Right. It was crazy. Oh. But Did you go to uh, Southington Mountain today? No, but that's where my kids learned to ski. That was their very first mountain. I love that's that you're from Connecticut. That's yes. Awesome. <laughs> so where'd you, you, you had to go to Mohawk then. Where'd you go? We did. We were at Mohawk. You were at Mohawk today. Of course. <laughs> Come on, we're like yep. family. <laughs> I know. See, we knew we would be fast friends. Billy. Absolutely. So, so what's, uh, I mean, it's probably obvious the difference in the lifestyle and the job, but talk through the difference with uh, FanDuel now versus what it was like with ESPN and what, what you like about it, what's different and all that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really incomparable the two, right? ESPN is the behemoth. It's the monster. It's the, they can do anything and everything. And that's the one thing that I really did love about FanDuel was I had the opportunity to come in and start something brand new. And I had a boss that I interviewed with. And what's funny, like the story of how I got to FanDuel is pretty funny because my marketing agent at the time, he called me, he's like, this guy from FanDuel called and wants to interview for a job in LA and Los Angeles. And I was like, I mean, I'm not going to take a job in Los Angeles, but I'll talk to him. Like, it's good to, you know, meet people in the industry. And I'm, you know, obviously in, in interviewing mode um, after I left ESPN. So I talked to this guy, Kevin Grigsby, and we completely hit it off. I get out, go to LA. I'm like, again, on the plane, like, I'm not going to take the job, but it's good to go. So I get there and on the way home, I'm like, shit, I want this <laughs> job so bad. <laughs> and, and so it was just like, it was that easy. And then um, it's funny because I people now are like, how do you work in Los Angeles? And I swear to you, I'm home and more present with my kids and my family now working in Los Angeles than I ever was at ESPN. So it's been a, a complete gift. Um, I'm really only there Tuesday to Thursday of the NFL season. I mean, almost every week. And then the weeks that I'm not there, we have a secondary set at the Meadowlands, which is, you know, in New Jersey. So it's just a, an hour and 20 minute drive from my house. Yeah. And so what's I mean, that's just the, the, the time piece and everything else is, um, I, I mean, I have, I have a voice that's, that is used and respected and appreciated in a different way because I'm able to come in and be like, all right, from the ground up, we need this, 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 I need you to do this. Lighting right. needs to be this. And right. so I'm almost like able to be a producer, director, talent, you know, everything that I, I want to do and, and have a great team to do it with too. So it's well, awesome. I think it's important that you know that the, um, it's kind of like the you gamblers, well, the gamblers of Johnson County are, are doing their yeah. part. In some Welcome small way. Kansas to the right? family. Holy <laughs> God. Talk about a marketing budget. Man, it was like, it'll be 12 hours before FanDuel goes live in Johnson County. Get download your app, right? And by yeah. the way, it's more Lisa Carney's slash mothers of four who've downloaded that app than even the husbands. Yeah. So congratulations, young lady. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's in it's insane. The um the the explosion of women that have come into the platform. And I mean, and, and it's, it's honestly like I did an interview with the New York times back in 2018. And this was again, right after the repeal. And 
I just tried to explain to the guy uh, what it's what sports betting is. And I was like, really, it's just a game within a game within a game within a game. And you can take it as deep and as far as you want to. But five dollars a day, you don't have to like be a degenerate and throwing, you know, thousands of dollars like five dollars on a game, a line, a prop, whatever it is. You're more interested in your Sunday than um, you would otherwise be. Well, we had Charles Barkley on a couple months ago and I was, we were talking about the national championship game when we were down by uh, 10 at half to UNC. And uh, I said, yep, I went on and I took the bet on the second half. He goes, you are a sick mofo betting on these second halves. I said, Charles, I was hedging. I knew I was going to lose the, the overall line. So I had to bet on the. The halftime line. Yeah, but he was the guy who was t- saying that Kansas will come back. Yeah. yeah, he called it. Right? So he called it. Yeah. Wait, by the way, who is he to judge anyone about being <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, he That's said, what? Right. Come on. Nah. Come on. He said, he said, you're really messed up. He also said he killed George for $100 million. We did post that question. You know, Once the last that. interview was I a did. Lot, I said 100 <laughs> The last interview I did with Charles Barkley, because he's a fan dueler as well. Um, we did a show together. He had his red solo cup, and I was like, fail. Where's my red solo cup? And you guys yeah. are here solo cup. So good Amazing. company. You can't have a red solo cup when you're hosting a show, but we can. <laughs> you're a professional. We're weekend warriors. <laughs> That's why I was like, yes, Kevin, get me on your show. Let's go. <laughs> so, hey, let's back up. Obviously, you yeah. grew up playing sports and amazing athlete at Cure of Ours, played sports at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, then went on to play um, college hoops. When did you know that this is the path you were going to take in terms of career? My gosh, it was when I was tiny. Um, Kevin, you know this. I'm one of five kids, and we're crazy competitive. Most of us played sports in college and, um, we're crazy competitive. So we would always go, go at it when we were young. And for whatever reason we had like, you know, those ginormous camcorders, like the really big ones with the whole VHS tape you would put in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause we're that old. Um, we would, we, somebody would like pick that up from my dad had or whatever. And I would hold like a popsicle or a hairbrush or whatever it was. And I would do like live play-by-play with my sisters and my brother like beating each other up or playing basketball or whatever it was um we made up sports and I was always interviewing everybody and I was like six or seven years old I was young and um I just always knew in my heart it's what I wanted to do and I think I just ESPN sports center I was introduced to it when I was young and I could actually see like I love sports so much and we were gigantic Chiefs fans and Royals fans and um we just watched a lot of sports in our house. And when it like hit me that I could be telling the stories that impact people's lives, I was like, that is exactly what I want to do. I'm going to go do that. And then, and then Hannah Storm and Robin Roberts and Linda Cohn and like all these, all these people that I've been very fortunate to work with and become friends with, um, you know, they're the trailblazers for women to like, look at the TV, see a woman on the TV and say like, ah, she's doing it. I can do it. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it never was a second, like I never had a plan B. So <laughs> thank God plan A worked out. Um, <laughs> I just really had blinders on and was like, you know, I'm little and people are like, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be on ESPN. And they're like, mm, okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> right. But even, even after school, I remember you moving to like some small town in my yeah. own Butte, Utah. Wasn't it Butte? Yeah. It was Butte, Montana. Yes. Butte, Montana. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? And did your doing? mother drive you there? She did. She All drove right. me there. How do you, you know that? that? I'm a creeper. I know. <laughs> yes. She did. Oh, also, mom, Kevin, by the way, my mom t- asked me to tell you to tell your parents that she says hi. They see you take my church all the time. Um, yeah. So my mom drove me there. This is actually a pretty funny story because. View Montana's market, like 297 or something. It's insane. It's like one of the last smallest, no one wants to go there markets in the entire country. And, you know, they give me a job offer and I'm telling my dad, he's like, well, how much are they paying you? And I was like, 18,500 for the year. And he was like, (laughs) you told them no. Right. And I said, no, this is great. I'm going to go do what I love to do. 
So I made 18.5 for the year. I get to Butte. My mom drives me there. There's just the two of us. We come over the mountain range and we're coming down into this like armpit of nothingness. It is, it is so impoverished there. It's, it's bad. It's bad. Oh, really? So we get to like go straight to my station, KXLF, CBS affiliate. And um, I get there and I have like my SUV because it's Montana and I open the back. My my news director comes out to meet me and he said, the sports guy didn't show up today. So I'm going to need you to do the sports tonight. And I had literally been in Butte for an hour. Wow. <laughs> I've awesome. never done a sp- I've never done a sports cast. I've come straight from college. I have no idea how to use the equipment, nothing. And so I like am in the back of my like pathfinder, like pulling out a, a suit, you know. I like wear a suit for every single show, pull the suit out and like waved my mom goodbye, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go to work and do this sports cast. And I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And so I did it, and that was my day one. And then uh the sports guy that ended up like not showing up for work that day wasn't happy that I was hired and just um ended up leaving the company he left and yeah. so I became the sports director like the next week was- no way good for you that, no, they, I mean, they bumped that 18.5 even- up to 20 25 oh no you don't get an increase for that it was 18.5 <laughs> for the year you just get more and responsibility I, the new business the, the crazy thing is is I'm driving around looking for a place to live. We tried, begged at the retirement home to let them like let me live there because it was like the nicest place in all of Butte. Oh I was God. like, I'm so quiet. It's just me. I promise you, I won't bother anybody. I can live in under my dad's name. They wouldn't let me do it. But the next best place was the low income housing apartments, like across the street, and I qualified. So I lived in low income. It was amazing. It oh, was, uh, it was, it was one year of my life that I'll never forget. I was so poor. I went to the grocery store and you know, when you get out of college, when you first start paying for things yourself and you're like, holy shit, I had no yeah. idea. things come, yeah. you know? And, um, <laughs> so I'm at like the register and the lady's like ringing up and like grapes and grapes go through. And I was like, did that say $6? She was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, no, no, grapes, grapes go back. Grapes go back. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that yeah. Is, well, but, but, you know, again, in prepping for, for the show, I think what was really cool is no doubt you've been asked by so many interviewers, you know, what does it take to get to sports center and to fan duel and to, you know, to be, to be hanging out with a Hannah storm, right? When you're when that yeah. becomes a bestie, you're doing pretty well. Right. Yeah. And and I loved how you said it, 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 it's a long road, right? And and an example is you know, my own daughter, who's a junior at Aquinas. She wants to be a Lisa Carney. Right? And of course, I told her to. Number. I plan I that. Why do you think I'm kissing your ass right now, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, yes. we, we jokingly talked about, you know, paying it forward and doing this, you know, like, oh, you're here to pay it forward yeah. or pay back, whatever it is. Right? But truthfully, and you guys get it, when you get to a point in your career where you're like, oh, I've kind of like been around a while. I've learned a lot. I've been through a whole bunch of crap and I, I've seen things. I should like tell people that are coming up that are going to be way better than I am so that I can help them to be better and do better and go farther. And so I would love to talk to your daughter. Of course. Oh God. What a, what a thought that would be. Thank you. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's take a, a quick break. Cause we know you got to get back to what well, you got to drop your daughter off at cheer practice, which I is do. very yes. important by the way. Yes. yes. Um, and You've so done that, haven't you? I do that. I do that three times a week. Well, I used to. She drives now, so I, I don't have to. Now I just don't see her. Although she did have a seventeen uh, year uh, birthday party last night, Lisa. I got to get your advice on this. So she said, "Dad, I'm going to have about twenty five folks over. Are you okay with it?" Now I have an Irish pub in my basement that's fully stacked. Yeah. What do you do? Do you allow them to have the party? You know they're bringing in the white claws and the red solo cups. <laughs> what do you do, Lisa? Do you let them have the party? You tell them that everyone's drinking high noons now. You're not drinking White Claws anymore. So <laughs> well we said. Drink for the high noons. <laughs> right. Right. So, so, you, I, so honestly, yes, you can I drink. No, I'm so afraid of that whole scenario. My oldest is 11. I have a couple of years left before I have to deal. I don't right. know. I'm going to be asking you for you your come advice. Come to me. I'll oh, tell you how it all went down. 
You're Back. right. I got we got him a bunch. You know who George's new sponsor is? What? It is right here, George. Hey. When we do our show, we love hot <laughs> noon. Stop it. <laughs> I yes, thought she did show bread too. Grab yourself up. a brand new. You're gonna love this. <laughs> Come on. You know why? Because the golf bag, those cans, when you get I have got a cooler bag that goes in the side of my golf bag, and it fits six of those high noons right there in the side. <laughs> That's fantastic. No, All right, yeah. quick, quick break. When we come back, a, a question I want you, uh, I want to ask you is, you know, what has changed over the years? It, it, my perception it, it, back in the day of Sports Center, um, where things were very polished, and of course now with podcasts and the Charles Barkleys of the world, and the, you know, so many of the co-anchors on these, search, it's there's this authenticity that you're balancing with professionalism. And I'm really curious, uh, you know, how do folks in your world identify who are going to be the good athletes who can be authentic, but they're coachable, right? right. So, so it's right. just, it's such an interesting industry. So, Hey, we're with Lisa Carter, by the way, while, uh, while we're on break, where can people watch you on FanDuel? Where can they learn more? A anything you got to say about FanDuel? Yeah. So thank you for, um, uh... Well, again, thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to invite people to watch FanDuel TV. September 1st this year, we launched our own TV network. So when you go to your smart TV, you just like use the voice thing and say like FanDuel TV and our app will pop up. Um, you can stream with us anywhere. Our shows are all over YouTube. Um, you can follow me at Lisa Kearney on Twitter and Instagram. I always tell you when my shows are coming out. Um, I'm... I try to be like super candid. I like to engage with the, my followers as well. It's just fun. People tend to be pretty nice um, yeah. somehow on those platforms. And so, yeah, so FanDuel TV are my shows 10 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's awesome. Love That's it. Awesome. All right. Hey, we're Lisa Kearney, FanDuel. Check it out, FanDuel TV. You're on ESPN Rio Golf Underground. Guys, as the male body ages, testosterone levels steadily decline, and your bodies become increasingly unable to produce healthy levels of the primary male hormone testosterone. At Regain Functional Medicine, we can help you regain your quality of life with testosterone replacement therapy. TRT improves brain function, sleep cycles, heart health, performance, and overall body composition so you can feel better, function better, move better, and look better. Visit us today at ifeelmuchbetter.com. Regain Functional Medicine with locations in Lawrence and Leewood. Regain is better. Hey, Brian Sullivan here, and I've got a tip for you. You've got to head to Unforked. It's an amazing restaurant. What I like about these guys is they promise to buy and support seasonal local ingredients first. And I love the fact that they source from smaller, family, GAP certified, or organic farms, prime going regions, artists and producers. All I'm getting at is, if you like fresh stuff, Unforked is the place to be. And like they say it, fork or no fork, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality, socially responsible ingredients possible. And not to mention, it's delicious. So whether you're out south or downtown, stop by Unforked for a delicious and healthy meal. Sheridan's Unforked, honest, clean food. Cowell Insurance Services is your leading program administrator for workers' compensation. They're dedicated to meeting the unique challenges of the insurance industry and assisting employers in reducing their costs. CIS has provided insurance claim and loss control services to various industries, including trucking, construction, retail convenience stores, and healthcare, as well as public entities for over 30 years. They work with both retail agents and industry clients, or a combination of the two. If you're tired of fighting the rising costs of premiums and claims, give Cowell Insurance Services a call. Their dedicated staff is ready to find you the best insurance option at the most competitive price. They can help to define or enhance your safety program in order to move you in the right direction in reducing your claim and premium costs. Contact Cowell Insurance Services today, 816-214-4070. Hey, Brian Sullivan from the Golf Underground here with a little good news. And that good news is that even double-digit handicappers like me can occasionally make a double eagle. All right, maybe not on a golf course, but even guys like me can score when buying a new car or truck. I'm talking about two stores, two brothers, and four generations, treating customers just like family. I'm talking about our buddies at Bobsite Ford and Bobsite Independence Kia. With these guys, you'll always score two under with double the inventory and double the customer satisfaction. That's the Bobsite Double Eagle. Now, Bobsite offers a wide selection of vehicles and promise to make the car buying process as quick and as hassle-free as possible. 
Now, whether you have poor credit, no credit, or maybe a first-time car buyer, you can trust Bobsite Ford. And Bobsite Independence Kia will get you into the car or truck you choose with professionalism and attention to your needs. So go visit our buddies at Bobsite.com, but only if you're looking for a vehicle that makes you feel like a U.S. Open champion. We're with Lisa Carney, Golf Underground, ESPN Radio. We're having a great time. My God, let me tell you something. You were a ball of energy. You were so fun to hang out with. Thank you for coming on our program. Yeah. This is a riot. This is a good synergy, right? You guys, me, we're doing the thing. It is. It's pretty good. Trust tree of sorts. Yeah. Hey, I got an idea. Maybe you can get George out there in studio sometime. Yes. Come on. Baseball betting. Let's go. That's where George is from. L.A. He's, Are you living out in LA uh, now? Are you living out there? No. She, she, no, she, I live in Connecticut. You go back and forth, back and forth. Because Sean Payton's living where I used to live in Manhattan Beach. That's where he's running a place That's from. That's where I stay is Manhattan Beach. But you, the one <laughs> thing you, 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 you got to do, there the one thing you got to do is you got to go to Urkeley's, which is one block, about one block, uh, that would be south of the Manhattan Beach Pier. It's a little yeah. bar. They had the best cheeseburger I've ever had in my life. Urkel. And if you're out by the airport on Manchester and Lincoln in that area, yeah. there's a there's a Mexican restaurant called Paco's Tacos. I've seen the it. Best, it's the best I've ever had. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, I got to try it. He um, loves his Paco's Tacos. You're going to have a nice time awesome. on the program. This is going to work out great. Get, do you ever get home? Do you go, do you go back home? I try not to get to California very often. <laughs> I really don't. I'll go out for four days. I'll play golf. I'll play at Virginia, Bel Air, LA Country Club, and Big Canyon, and then fly home. Yeah. I have friends of mine that still live there from high school, and I have other friends that are members of all the courses. So he we just, go out for four days. Oh. I stay in Manhattan Beach, and we commute every day, and... Just yeah. have a blast. He discovered yeah. a little place called Scottsdale, so now he's a little Scottsdale yeah. snob. Yeah. He is, he is <laughs> he's always got his tan. You've always got the tan. Yeah, yeah. He does. Well, you're a big Gavin Newsom fan, which leads us <laughs> to our next question. <laughs> All right, let's hit her with a little rapid fire. Let's hit you one, Wait, can I ask one question. I see a question down here. <laughs> he's got his shot. Yeah. <laughs> Talk through some items that everyday <laughs> sports person watches, okay? What? <laughs> that they have no clue about. Like behind the scenes stuff. Like He's Chris Berman was a good friend and Chris was, I never went to a ESPN broadcast, but I knew, yeah. I knew Chris pretty well. Tell me some funny stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, what's what one thing, one huge common misconception is that everyone thinks that the anchors that are doing it, sports center, whatever show that we just like show up, sit down and read the teleprompter. But our production meetings are five, six hours before. And then the real fun stuff always, it always happens at the pod. We have our pods where all of the talent is together, producers, directors, everybody is there together. And that's where all, you know, the smack talk goes down. All of the fun stuff happens. And then um, I feel like anymore, people, people with social media, you know, but with your phones, they take you behind the scenes so you can see like, the yeah. control room, getting mic'd up, different things like that. And that's the access that you're talking about with like, right. you know, bridging the professionalism with like the relatability and like how much do, do you really want to share and how much do you keep yeah. to the side so that you still have a presence that's very polished, you know? Um, right. It's, it is actually kind of an art, I think, where some people nail it and you know them well enough to know that they're nailing it. And then other yeah. people, you're like, we're, we're going a little bit too far. Little That's a little too yeah, much. A little right. too much you that I don't need to know. Um, but um, kind of stories of like things that have happened. Oh, there's a funny story. Um, well, okay. So let's see. I don't know if I can tell that story. Um, is it? So I won't say the player's name. How about that? All right. So mm-hmm. when I was in Seattle, I was at the um, NBC affiliate in King five and I was there for five years and I covered the Seahawks. I covered the Mariners. I covered the Seattle supersonics. And so I covered so many of those supersonics games and I was in the locker rooms before the games. I was in the locker rooms after the games. Um, When, when, well, there's, there's Kobe, there's a Kobe story, but then there's uh, LeBron James. He's brand new in the league. He comes to Seattle. They're playing. He's doing his pregame press conference. And it's it's so funny to me now that they did pregame press conference. Like, 
I don't, I don't, I haven't covered an NBA team like on the ground in a while, but I don't think they talked to you before games like they did with us back then. Mm -hmm. But it was like 15 minutes before the game. They're tipping off. And LeBron James is sitting there eating French fries and chicken fingers and like (laughs) the food that I was like so confused, staring at this like huge human that's doing super super superhuman things even back then. And um, I was thrown off by what he was eating right before the game. Um, so that happened. And that was, that's a, that's a whatever story. But there was another player that played for the Pistons. Pistons come in town. Again, I'm with my camera guy. I'm with the, all the other media. We come in and we do, this is now post game. And this player, um, I've been, I, I've, I have not experienced a lot of um, issues like this, where I'm a female in a male's locker room and anything is like just a little off, off base. But this particular player who's a starter, so we're going to go talk to him. He takes his towel <laughs> and does one of those, you know, oh. Oh, and, no. we're, and, we're, and like leaves it there while like we're talking to him. And I'm doing the interview, like my microphone is in his face. And I was so pissed. I was like, really, really? And, you know, just so disrespected. And and anyway, that happened. Ugh. I go on, do the rest of my job, blah, blah, blah. Years later, I'm at ESPN Sports Center. This player comes into ESPN and is doing a basically audition for no. an NBA wow. analyst. For us, ESPN. And so now I'm in the power position. He nice. comes into my show and he's like, you know, so like intimidated by the camera and like, the, you know, now he's on the other side. And like, I was just like, oh my gosh, he has no idea who I am. But Did I you tell him? No, <clears throat> he I didn't did get hired. I guarantee you that. <laughs> not tell him. But, you um, and you didn't hire him, did you? But no, he worked. He worked there like a few weeks, kind of like a an extended audition, and then he was gone. So I was like, good. "Isn't that funny how things come around?" Yeah. Oh my God. Hey, Brian Sullivan of Golf Underground with my favorite orthopedic surgeon, Doctor Kevin Witty from Sano Orthopedics. Hey, Doc, golf season's over. My back is killing me. I know it's football season, so you got a lot of kids coming in, blown ACLs, all sorts of body parts with problems. And then, of course, those baseball players. I know you fix a lot of elbows. Why is Sano Orthopedics the absolute best sports medicine orthopedic group in Kansas City? Well, if you want to see the guys in town who've had the best orthopedic fellowship training in sports medicine, um, including training with Dr. James Andrews and Dr. Larry Lemack, come see us. Uh, We individualize patients' uh, plans to get them back to that activity and that sport that they love. And we actually care and listen to our patients and follow up with them make sure that they're getting the results they need okay and so the three things that separate you number one best training number two you specialize in getting people on that field number three you're actually listen where can i learn more because you got me all in and i don't really want to get fixed but it's time at sonoorthopedics.com 816-525-2840 Hi, this is George Brett, Hall of Fame baseball player, and I've been playing golf for over 35 years. Hitting the ball far was never my problem, but the closer I got to the greens, that's when my problems began. When I wanted a golf practice area in my backyard, I called Celebrity Greens. They are the industry leader in custom-built synthetic golf greens. These championship caliber, low-maintenance greens roll great, react like real bent grass, and hold chip shots that check and spin. I absolutely love mine, not only in Kansas City, but also in Arizona. Call the pros at Celebrity Greens at 1-888-507-7960 or visit them online at CelebrityGreens.com. Practice like the pros or people like me that want to be pros right in your own backyard. Hey, Brian Sullivan, Golf Underground, with a little tip for you. If you're looking to buy a new Ford, you have to check out my buddy, Jason Gudenkoff at Lewisburg Ford. They've been saving Midwest Ford buyers thousands of bucks for over 40 years because they do business the right way. They sell everything. Check this out for $50 over invoice. That's simple and cheap. And they win a lot of awards. In fact, they won Ford's President's Award 17 times. That's the top Ford award. And they only give it to dealers with superior customer satisfaction in sales and service. So they know how to take care of customers better than anybody. Now, what these guys know how to do also, keep this in mind, sell trucks. Lewisburg Ford has sold more F-150s than any other Ford dealership in greater Kansas City. That's two years running. 
And last year, they were the number one F-150 sales leader in the entire state of Kansas. So, no hassle. $50 over invoice pricing, unparalleled customer satisfaction, and a huge selection. That's a perfect recipe for selling trucks. So, check out all their inventory and prices online at lewisburgford.com. Or give them a call at 816-444-2300. New golf clubs. A big screen TV to watch the U.S. Open? Or maybe even a new golf cart that I've got my eye on? No matter how you choose to spend the savings, if you're looking to put a dent in your monthly heating and cooling bills, the answer may be right over your head. If your attic isn't insulated properly, you're missing out on a prime opportunity to cut costs. Call the certified energy experts at Star Companies, Inc., 816-353-2160 for a free estimate to learn how they can help you save money. 816-353-2160 or visit StarCompaniesKC.com. Let's go with the Red Zone with Lisa Kearney, a new Red okay. Zone, brought to you by Sheridan's Unforked Eating Good, Feeling Good. And you FanDuel and TV. FanDuel TV. You got to answer. And high noon. And high noon. Don't forget your next-gen cattle company. And the little and flowers. Shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Golf tables. All right, here we go. Red Zone with Lisa Kearney. Think quick, Lisa. More questions. The best yeah. athlete you've ever seen in person. Patrick Kearney. Yes. Great answer. Her, her awesome husband. Uh, okay. so hey, by the way, Wade's an Atlanta homer. So he was talking about yes. how good of a player he is. Go All right. Uh, second question. Second down in the red zone. The most influential person in the industry you've been around for your career. Ooh, Hannah Storm. Awesome. Third question. Third Third down from the three yard line. We're I gonna thought go you were going to ask me second down who am I throwing the ball <laughs> to no or who's running here. it in? No. Third, <laughs> I've seen no repeatability in this. Third down. <laughs> third down. Okay. Um, your favorite Chiefs player of all time, excluding Patrick Mahomes. Oh, Marcus Allen. Fourth and goal. Fourth and goal. <laughs> More than goal from the nine. From the nine. Five year loss on that. Five year loss on that. Took a sack. Four pro athletes. Your family's going to be caddying for you. What four athletes do you pick? Wait, say that again because I didn't get the whole question. Four so. Play golf with four pro athletes living Uh or dead. Who are you picking? Well, obviously, George Brett. Uh, (laughs) Obviously. Should we bring on Buddy Biancolana? No, he's not very good. (laughs) <laughs> okay. oh man um duh, that's tough do they have to be ringers or just like fun oh someone who will drink six high noons with you before the nine holds over oh, okay um this should not be difficult a stump, a probably stump marcus or... allen well <laughs> yeah can i pick, can i can i repeat yeah just, like, you can repeat like, so marcus allen um, and why not go, uh, Joe Montana? Solid. Uh, it's the nineties. You, you, you were a big chiefs fan in the nineties. You're pulling up the whole roster. Oh, yeah. that's what, yeah. I, I'm very word. I was a very nerdy chiefs. <laughs> I was a very nerdy, uh, sports Kevin's sports. best friend, Nick Lowry. <laughs> um, all right. Throw him in there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that was my best friend. Now we're going to a girls' trip. <laughs> like, and no. There's eight of no. us. No. Uh, All right. Well, that, uh, did we yeah. do we get? To, oh, she's gone. She's out. She's can out. We, can we, okay, so if we could, we would have Derek Thomas with us. Right in peace. Uh, yes. Four one out. Here, we'll put I it. love that. Good answers. Four one out. All right. Well, well Lisa, um, one more time, give the folks where they can um, see you. This energy, this smile, the whole bit. Please join us. Uh, it's me and my four guys. It's, our show is More Ways to Win on FanDuel TV. To, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And then um, on my on YouTube, you can find us on FanDuel. And you can find us on my social channels. Um, I push out wherever we are all the time. At Lisa Kearney on Twitter and Instagram. That is awesome. Last question, Lisa. <laughs> Do you know anyone in the sports world that would want to come on a show, a podcast with this guy? Oh yeah. I would what? I wouldn't want to come on a show. I could I yeah, we should talk. We'll text. We'll text. All right. Yes. I, I love it. All right, Lisa Curry. Hook me up with your daughter. I wanna I oh. wanna talk to your daughter and make sure 
Make sure she has all her questions answered, what she, whatever she wants to know. You have no idea how much I would appreciate that. That is so I nice of that. you. So <laughs> good. All right, Lisa Kearney, you are the best. Happy uh, New Year to those four wonderful kids of yours, that wonderful mm-hmm. husband. Send my love to the Nutmeg State. When you go through Waterbury, hold your nose and drive fast. <laughs> all right? Yep. So we all do. Right. Uh, thanks for and- having me, guys. It was a blast. Right. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, thanks so much, Lisa. Take care now. Appreciate it, Lisa. Bye. All right. So uh, that was fun. What a fun Did time. Did you have fun? What a oh, fun you guys time. are the best. Thank you. He wasn't very good, you I don't think. think. Oh, can you <laughs> we still on? You know, I'm a little shy. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to get me to, you know, talk. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, someone shut this one up. Jeez. Do you, ever, do you ever come back and visit Kansas City? Yes. You know what? I just started working with the Ronald McDonald House Charities in Kansas City. Oh, great. Um, and so I'm coming back in March to shoot some stuff with them. And or March, April, whatever the date will be. And then I just try to, I try to get back a, a few times a year. That's yeah. awesome. All right. Well, we hope to see you live next yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Come to the, come to the golf underground studios. You'll be impressed. I would love it. <laughs> I love it. Thanks you guys. All right. Oh, yeah. you. Maybe yeah. you should blur out the uh, shade hotel thing. We will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what room is yeah. that by the way? What room? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Sorry, right. you, you guys have a good night. Appreciate Thanks. your time. Bye-bye. Thanks Bye. so much. So well, we gotta do a, a quick wrap up, don't quick we? Quick wrap up. Yeah. Um so what a treat that was. That was fantastic. She you was know what? really good. I mean, great to see um she's she's right. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, that's off that's off there. <laughs> it is you don't like Mizzou? You, you, you don't like oh. Mizzou. No, but it's it, like what a cool. Cool. She was really good. You know what's crazy is like she was I knew she was gonna do that from grab um I knew she was gonna do that from when she was 15, like she said. And to be honest, like I remember when she went to that job and what wherever that was, Wyoming, and I'm just like she was just dreading it. And I'm just like, you well, want him. she's gonna it's, go do it. It's hard. I'm telling you, think of how many um how many girls that age want to be sideline reporters, right? And you see how young they are, like on college football on the weekends. Yeah. You know, like, oh my gosh, that kid just graduated. But you don't get to where she is unless you go through five different stops and, you know, yep, bust your ass. Well, it's kind of similar to what um, Sean Payton was saying, though. I mean, just you work your way up the ranks. You work your way up the ranks. Yep, all the stops he made. Um, Yeah, they're playing mini tours. Exactly. A mini tour. Yeah. Yeah. And let's just say Greenwich, Connecticut. I mean, she was That's she was got she a really good gig making eighteen five. My first year in the minor leagues, I made five hundred bucks a month. Jesus, jeez, and look at you, Jesus, crying out! All right, look boys, at, hey, um, good show. We, you, that was a great show. Bring, that was really good. That was a great yeah. show. George is leaving us though. I'm leaving, us, I'm leaving you guys for a while. But we'll you'll, you'll still zoom in with us. Yeah, zoom in. So, so I've got when you do we've it. got Bob Ford coming on from um now, who's Bob Ford? I don't Mark know. Who Bob Ford. He's the he's the head pro at Oakmont and okay. Seminole, probably the most okay. oh, prestigious two it's clubs. Yeah. That's probably the Pretty best job in, yeah. in golf yeah. on that side of the industry. Um and then we've got um oh, who else do we've got coming on? My buddy from home. We got Jim McLean coming on here. So we just got to have a, a little. Outreach. I know he's a teacher. Yep. Yeah. So I played you- Seminole a couple of times. I was playing with my buddy, Mike Hartley from uh, Hawaii. That's fair. And we're over there playing and, and he's shooting about 110 <laughs> and we get on the 17th hole and he gets a hole in one. Oh my God. On the 17th hole, he got wow. a hole in wow. one. Can you believe that? That's amazing. I think he shot a hundred and like 18 <laughs> with a hole in one. <laughs> he had to go in and buy the print to the 17th hole. He's got it hanging in his house. In uh, Hawaii. That's seminal. That's pretty good. Exclusive. It's, yeah. a, it's a really cool hole right up against the water too. Yeah. So. Yeah, did, didn't they do a little Justin Thomas? Uh, yeah, they, they did like a little, little. They did that match with DJ and Rory yeah. and the. And, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That was, yeah that was, awesome. Is that the COVID match? Were you yeah, sick? Wait, is that why you didn't get to play? You had COVID. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, boys. Well, um, happy New Year. What to else you. is going on? What's going on in the golf world? Hey, we don't worry about golf on this program. We don't. <laughs> no. Okay. My God. Right. We'll talk about that some other time. Okay. Next week, we're gonna send you a Zoom link. All you have to do is pop in. Your little face is yeah. gonna be right up there. Okay. All right. George, you going to uh, remote in from the library? Where where are you going to do this from your house? You going to do it from the back porch where we did the uh, wedding show, or where are you going to do it out there? Might do it in the backyard, depending on what the weather is. Oh, we get the, the weather's good. I'll go in the backyard. If it's not, I'll maybe do it in the uh, 
in the kitchen, or maybe I'll do it in the TV room. You got the hooray grill um, uh, out there? No, I don't have a hooray grill out there. There's not, not enough room in the backyard. The backyard's huge, but we have a, a deck. <laughs> and and you don't want to do all that smoke in the deck because it would get all over your the windows. backyard is good size. It's he had Gordo's freaking wedding almost back there. Yeah, but it's uh, but the where you could barbecue actually. There's not. I have the built-in barbecue, and then I have the uh, Traeger. Yeah, and the nice. hooray. Uh, in fact, Jackson stole my hooray. I don't even have one now, but uh, I'm going to get one when I come back from Arizona for the summer. But um, there's there's not a place to put a hooray. Yeah, I think not a place to put it back there. What about that nice little um, pool house you have right there? Right? Where, oh, that's my casita. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> right? You put it right there against the window. Isn't that my casita? Get smoke all over the window. It's, who cares? It's Wardo in there. And you got to walk too far from the kitchen to the uh, get there. Jeez. Talk Real life problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed yourself. Happy holidays to you and your family. We'll um, we got some more great shows coming up. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Of course, we're now on TikTok, boys. We're getting famous. Oh, Hello, <laughs> George. I'm setting up a dance. George doing a dance would be. Yeah. Just... <laughs> You've been listening to the Golf Underground, ESPN Radio. Yeah.